Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome, whether you're here in the sanctuary, having uh, braved the cold and the snowdrifts at home or somewhere else entirely. Thank you for taking the time to come together as a worshiping community. And a special welcome as well to our guest preacher today, the Reverend uh, Jen Hind, and I'll introduce her more fully uh, in the service uh, later on. So friends, let's begin with the lighting of our Christ candle. And I see Adela back there in the family worship space. If she wants to begin coming forward to help us out with that. The candle in our sanctuary is wrapped symbolically from week to week in the diverse colors of human flesh. The presence of the divine and the human is true in Jesus the Christ and true in all peoples. Good morning. Oh, we've got two. There you go. There you go. Yeah, got it. You want to pull that down? Pull this down? All the way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adela. You can go with your mom. Friends, God's love knows no bounds. It draws us and keeps us together. It is this love that we encounter in the life of Jesus and by the Spirit's power. We light our candles to remind us of this holy presence that calls and unites us in worship. So uh, Isabel Field will now lead us in our statement of welcome and territorial and land acknowledgement. Good morning. My name is Isabel Field. Would you please join me in our responsive reading in affirming the welcome that is extended to all peoples? Uh, seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe, but who are asking large questions. Welcome to people of all ages, colors, abilities, gender identities, and sexual orientations. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. We continue our service with gratitude and respect as we remember together that this land, this planet, is sacred. We are on holy ground. Earth is our only home and we are connected with all who live here. In every season, the earth offers us wisdom. We give thanks for the gift of clarity that winter brings. In the starkness of the leaf-stripped landscape, we become aware of what we did not notice before. On bare branches, chickadees perch to feed on sumac berries. Animal tracks the stories in the snow. There is silence here too, an offer of deeply needed rest and summons for reflection. We lament that we have not honored our deep relationship with the earth, the climate crisis, the devastation of habitats, and loss of species 
are all calling us to learn and practice better stewardship. The Haudenosaunee, Trinotan, and Anishinaabe have cared for and shared this land for millennia. Generations ago, they welcomed newcomers who entered into treaties with them. Treaties and trust have been broken. We all live with the consequences. We seek to live into right relationship with all Indigenous peoples on whose land we have settled. We commit to listening to and respecting their wisdom. In this moment of silence, we ponder what is asking for our attention? What is asking to be noticed and understood more clearly? Thank you, Isabel. Uh, so friends, let's uh, continue our time of gathering uh, with some uh, an announcements. I know uh, Deb and uh, Jack have an announcement, so please come forward. Or anyone else, if you have an announcement and you're here, come forward. If you're on Zoom, just type it into the chat and uh, we'll make sure that it uh, gets uh, read out. Just want to remind you that there is uh, coffee time um, today following church. And uh, Deb's also going to tell you something more uh, about uh, uh, church today. Also, children's activities begin this week with Bethany following the covenanting uh, portion of the service where we covenant with uh, Bethany as our uh, new uh, children and youth uh, activity leader uh, this morning. Betty? Good morning. So after you've got your coffee this morning, we'll be serving it just outside in the foyer. We ask that you come back into the, the congregational space and into the sanctuary and join us for a congregational question and answer. We have an opportunity for a long-term rental here at Parkminster, which does make a, a number of changes. So I hope um, you received a pr presentation in the WhatsApp and it'll be a time for question and answer and then that'll help to inform the board as we go ahead and, and make decisions about this long-term rental. Thank you. And uh, come on up, Jack. But just to uh, add to that, if you're on Zoom and you wish to participate in the meeting, just stay on Zoom. We're not going to close the Zoom meeting until after the meeting about the rental is, um, is finished. Thanks, Joe. I just came up to see if I could get some, a couple of guys to come over and shovel my snow. <laughs> no, 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 I just, I'm not. <laughs> I'm here to tell you about our next uh, Parkminster Speaker Series event, which is a week from today. Sunday night, January 21st, uh, Paul Knowles will be speaking, a member of our congregation. Um, and Paul is a travel journalist, and he's also the president of the Travel Media Association of Canada, so he knows a little bit about it. He's going to talk about some of the top challenges that uh, we all face in traveling and how to avoid them, whether that's packing your bags, not putting too much in your bags, Adrian, um, negotiating the airports, choosing destinations, um, just talking about some of the mistakes we make as travelers, and he'll be talking about a variety of other associated issues, the pros and cons of tourism and some other little heavier stuff, but uh, he does it all with a, a, a light touch and a dash of humor. If you were here for the uh, session that Paul spoke on writing our own stories, you'll know that he's, a, he's really an excellent and entertaining and informative speaker. So next Sunday, 7.30 here in the sanctuary. And I should mention that in February, Mike Morris, the uh, Member of Parliament for Kitchener, is coming uh, to talk to us about electoral reform. So that's uh, the, the February speaker. Thank you. So I'm not seeing any uh, announcements on Zoom. Doesn't appear that there's any others here in the sanctuary. And so, um, friends, we have a bit of a, an unfamiliar hymn this morning, so just stay seated for the moment, and Neil's going to uh, do a little bit of teaching. Well, I think this one might be okay, Joe, the oh, second one. It's the second, second one. Yes. So, friends, <laughs> rise as you are able as we join in singing Creator Spirit Living Word. It's number 531 in your voices united, verses 1, 3, and 6.
friends, today is a special day for our community. We gather to welcome and covenant with Bethany McMullen in her new role at Park Minster, leading children and youth ministry activities. I want to acknowledge as well and thank Rob McQueen and the chair of the Ministry and Personnel Committee and the entire MMP committee for their efforts in bringing us to this point today. As we begin this journey together, let us unite our hearts and minds in committing to uphold each other in this vital ministry. Would you join with me in, infirm, in affirming this as our intent? And we'll, join, we'll join together. We, the people of Park Minster, Minster United come Church, come, come together, together with, with open hearts, hearts and minds, understanding, understanding the importance of nurturing the spiritual growth of our, our children and youth. And we, we commit, commit to supporting, supporting their, their journey, journey and, and learning together, together as, a as a community. I'm honored. Oops. How about now? Yes. <laughs> I'm honored and excited to join you in nurturing the spiritual life of our youth and children as followers of Jesus the Christ. I promise to walk alongside our children and youth, creating a vibrant, safe, and welcoming space where their voices are heard and their spirits are nourished. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we'd like to invite uh, Adela and, is it Sadie? and Sadie to come forward. Adela, would you like to come forward? Bethany, give, uh, I give you. I give you this children's Bible. This children's Bible. Share the stories. Share the stories of God's ways. Of God's ways with us. With us. Help us learn. Help us learn how Jesus shows. How Jesus shows. Shows us what love is. Shows us what love is. Help us spot. Help us spot God's spirit. God's spirit in our lives. In our lives. Okay. Now this next one is a big one. Oh. Let me hold the microphone because it's so big. <laughs> Bethany. Bethany. I give you this beach ball. I give you this beach ball. Covered in questions. Covered in questions. Help us to be curious. Help us to be curious. And to wonder. And to wonder. About our faith. About our faith. Play with us. Play with us. Laugh with us. Laugh with us. Share God's joy. Share God's joy. With us. With us. Thank you. <laughs> Bethany, I present this backpack. Help us learn and practice the ways of Jesus, making this world a better, more equal, more kind, more just place for all. As a congregation, we will promise. We remember the promise we make at baptism to provide and support, support Christian nurture for, for our children and families. families. We, we celebrate Bethany's new ministry in her, her response, response to God's, God's call. call. We will be partners with her and our children and you in, in the, the ministry, ministry of, of Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Christ. We, we pray, pray for, for them, them and embrace their contributions to the, to the life of Park Minster and the United, United Church, Church of Canada. Canada. I promise to listen attentively to the voices of our children and youth, fostering an environment where their unique needs and perspectives are honored. I commit to working with all of you to create spaces that encourage curiosity, exploration, acceptance, and understanding. 
So let's take a moment to bless and dedicate ourselves to this journey together. Loving God, we rejoice and give thanks for Bethany's gifts and her presence among us. Send your spirit to guide and support Bethany in this new role. Bless her ministry and our ministry together in nurturing the faith and receiving the gifts of our children and youth. And together with gratitude, gratitude and, and hope, we embark, we embark on, on this journey, trusting, trusting in the support of one another, another the presence of God, God the, the way of Jesus, Jesus and the power of the Spirit. Spirit. May love, understanding, and fellowship guide us as we nurture the hearts, minds, and spirits of our children, youth, and community. Amen. All right. Okay. If anyone else of the child variety is here and wants to head downstairs, we're happy to have you. Thank you, Bethany. She knows where she's going. <laughs> and so friends, as we uh, prepare to hear a story uh, from our faith tradition and listen for the word of God within it, let's prepare ourselves with prayer. Let's pray. Amid the world's boastful words, your hopeful word endures, O God. Amid the world's self-serving words, your selfless word endures, O God. Amid the world's uncaring words, your compassionate word endures, O God. Amid the world's indifferent words, your word of love endures, O God. Holy One, may we listen for your word amongst the words. Amen. Yeah. So the, uh, this, this next hymn is new to me, and it might be new to you. So I'm going to play the whole hymn, and then just like school, we're going to learn it one line at a time. It goes like this. students it's an I sing you sing time I start joyful is the dark holy hidden God and it's your turn Excellent effort. All right, let's do it together, shall we? First one. Joyful is the dark, holy, hidden God. Rolling cloud of night beyond our naming. Majesty in darkness, energy of love. Word and flesh, the mystery broke.
the, excuse me, the reading from our faith tradition comes from the Gospel of John, John's version of the Jesus story, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. <clears throat> Today we'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? This is good news for all who need it. May God bless us with a deep awareness of our need. There was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. You don't really care for music, do ya? Goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, Bible king composing, hallelujah. strong and you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair, broke your throne and cut your hair. From your lips she drew the Say I took the name in vain, I don't even know the name, if I did, well really, what's it to ya? There's a blaze of light in every word, doesn't matter which you heard, the holy or the broken.
did my best, it wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I told the truth, I didn't come to fool ya. And even though it all went wrong, I stand before the Lord of song. Nothing on my tongue but hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jamie. Well, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce our first um, speaker in our Voices of Faith um, series, members of um, the community, people of faith uh, in, the, in the community who come and speak to us about what's on their heart uh, these days. And many of you will know um, our first uh, speaker already, the Reverend uh, Jen Hind, having served at Emmanuel United Church for um, a number of years. Jen writes, um, it's by way of personal experience with grief and bereavement that uh, Reverend Jen Hine discerned a call to ministry after realizing the tremendous support that she received from her faith community after the death of her father. That experience forever changed her outlook on human relationships and the need for supportive care in the community in general. Grief and bereavement support became a passion of theirs, and over the years, she has expanded into a wide variety of communities in need of support. But spiritual care, along with grief and bereavement support, have always been and continue to be their touchstone. In 2016, she graduated seminary from Martin Luther University College and was ordained by the United Church of Canada. From there, she spent seven years in congregational ministry in Waterloo. When the opportunity arose to join the incredible team at Stedman Community Hospice in Brantford, she jumped at the chance to go home to a place where she could uh, reestablish their focus on grief and bereavement support in the community. Jen lives in Cambridge and in their spare time enjoys biking and spending time with the spirit by walking in nature or by water. Jen. Thanks, Joe. And thank you to all of you uh, on Facebook, here in the sanctuary, and wherever you are, it is wonderful to be with you this morning. Seeds rest in the soil. Frogs burrow deeply into the mud and accept the nearness of death. Bears sleep under drifts of snow. Squirrels nestle in the hollow of a tree and rely on the stores of autumn. The sap of oak and maple thicken and slow. Prairie grass whispers a farewell on a cold wind and withdraw to root and ground. We, we light a lamp. We watch for dawn, trusting that it will come once more. The season of wintering brings death for so much that flourished in the springtime. The season of wintering brings dormancy for lives in need of rest. And the season of wintering brings a lingering darkness. We can see by way of what the natural world reveals that darkness holds its own luminous vitality. 
it can be a generative place of repose, of healing, of growth, and of transformation. Darkness is also a place of mystery where we cannot rely on our own senses in the same way we are accustomed to in the light, and where we must trust another way of perceiving. We must seek another way of knowing. By traveling darkened paths, pathways shadowed by suffering, loss, grief, doubt, confusion, or uncertainty, we come to perceive an enduring light to which we formerly had been blind. We are like Nicodemus, who comes to Jesus at night seeking confirmation of his expectations, and who suddenly found himself blinded by a moment of not knowing confronted by an unlearning and an invitation to be reborn by the light of Christ's love. Nicodemus needed this dark night of the soul, much like a growing embryo requires the darkened weight within the womb before birth. In the upheaval of a waning pandemic, war, economic instability, and the persistent struggles for racial justice, and the unmooring social patterns and structures, we traverse a disorienting nighttime of pain and grief. Sometimes, in order to heal, transform, and encounter some new illumination, we must consent to go by way of what is dark and pregnant with not knowing. After struggling with how to make sense of all this, I had a thought that did make sense to me. There are times when we need to be at a loss. There are times when we need to befriend our confusion. There are times when being in the dark is the only way to see new light. In my work at Stedman Community Hospice, I am often in the presence of grief, bereavement, death, and dying, confusion, and fear. When I am walking with people, we are often walking in the darkness of pain and loss, and I often find myself standing in the space between the pieces of one's broken heart. One of the reasons why I think Leonard Cohen's song, Hallelujah, his poem, are so widely renowned, recounted, and recorded is because in its genius, it explores and conveys the complexities of love and loss, not only as fundamental components of each other, but of the human experience itself. At its core, there is deep loss. There is deep confusion in the notion of a broken hallelujah. The poem takes us by way of darkness into a glimmer of light around the sharp edges of love and loss as the words culminate into an acceptance of the pain, but only for the sake of love. For what is love but, in the end, a broken hallelujah because we dared to love, we dared to lose. And as the song confirms, there is a blaze of light in every word. And despite the pain, I shall still stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah which is to say, with the joy of love that I have known, well, I would do it all again and again. I see your flag. I see your flag on the marble arch. I see the act of surrender to life and to loss. I see the hole within your soul that love has caused, and I see the broken edges of your heart. 
I see the pain that you carry, but I also see the shimmer of light your bravery in wintering bestows. For to love and to be loved is nothing short of a courageous act. As the baffled king composes hallelujah, our baffled hearts compose a new song from the darkest, the darkness of our tempest-tossed days, so that we may one day rise and answer the call to love once again. We take with us the light that shines through our broken things, and we let it guide our path and encourage us to be brave once again, but only for the sake of love. Carrying with us always the cost of love, we reinvest and double down because love itself is worth the pain time and time again. And so all this to say, I realize that Jesus does not want to give Nicodemus what he wants. Jesus wants to give him what he needs. Jesus knew that Nicodemus needed for once in his life, he needed to not have it all figured out, that he would only make progress as he went through the disorientation and painful confusion. He needed to go through the darkness of not understanding and of not knowing. If Nicodemus was to stand in the light of the truth and the grace that Jesus was offering, he was going to have to let go of many of the assumptions and dogmas that he had so firmly been holding on to for dear life. He needed to gather his courage and be willing to risk his status and his power so that he might inherit the more transformative and life-enhancing gift of Christ's love. And this is not the first time we've seen Jesus do this. Jesus often gives us the opposite of what we think we need. The, um, the rich young ruler who came to see Jesus seeking the way to eternal life comes to mind. He wanted uh, Jesus to affirm him for all the hard work he had done to be a good and holy person and to give him the final assurance that he was on a pathway to heaven. But Jesus confused him by telling him, to give up everything, give away everything, and follow him. Jesus seems to do the same with us in our own time. We'd love to find a way to justify nursing that grudge with someone, but Jesus tells us, well, we need to forgive. We come to worship wanting a little bit of peace and comfort in our life, and what we receive is a command to go and be in relationship and in service to others. Jesus wanted Nicodemus to understand that he was not offering him some nice new insight into his life, but fundamental transformation and a complete reorientation of his life. And nothing reorients our life quite like grief does. Nicodemus needed to start over and come into this world with a radically new way of seeing. He needed to press the factory reset button on himself and begin anew. That is why Jesus uses such a surprising image. Jesus says we must be born again. We must be reborn by a way of a birth that comes from the womb of God. What a perfect image Jesus offers us. Just for a moment, let us together consider the image of birth. A baby begins in a womb. A womb is a place of darkness. In the womb, we are attached to our mother in whom we dwell and from who, in the dark, in that dark place, everything we need is provided. In the womb, there is no thinking. There is only feeling, perceiving, and receiving. We are born by way of darkness. Being born again, being born of God's womb, is to be reborn by a way of darkness. Like I tell my clients, if you're using your head to think your way through your grief, you're using the wrong tool. 
Grief can only be felt. We cannot fix it, change it, or go around it. We must go through it. We must come through the darkness of God's womb to be reborn into a place that recognizes the transformative power of God's love. This year, as in previous years, it feels like the waxing night is accentuating the incessant changes and losses that we are experiencing right now with one another and bearing witness to along with the entire world. Together, we are living a moment that is shadowed by unrest and uncertainty. And we go this way, not alone, but together. We go this way with no other light, no other guide than the one that is burning within our hearts. The light that is burning in our hearts is our collective light, placed there by a power much greater than just ourselves as individuals. Let us become enlightened to the idea that we are universally connected to each other by way of God's womb. Let us harness this power and shine our unified light together and connect to that one principle that sustains love above all. And that is that it is precisely in the dark where God's light shines most brightly. Let us all leave here born again, born from above, born from water and from spirit, born by way of the womb of God because it is the light that shines through our darkened and broken hearts that leads us once again down the path of courage and bestows upon us the acceptance, the willingness, and the beauty to rise and to love again. Amen. Please be seated. Jen, thank you very much for your sharing your, your uh, gifts of eloquence and the gifts of your experience. <laughs> and the gifts of your learnings as well. And friends, there are many gifts uh, to offer, time, talent, and a treasure. 
and um, they come from one source and so moved by gratitude we are moved to give back and so in that spirit let us bring our gifts before god What can I do? What can I bring? What can I say? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. Holy One, whether you're calling us to sit in the darkness of your life-giving womb or whether you are calling us into the light of new ways bless these gifts that they may be used to uphold and support your people whatever the call may be we pray this in the name of jesus the christ and in the power of your holy spirit amen Please be seated. And so, friends, in response to God's grace, in response to God's love, let's come together in prayer, confident that um, our prayers will be heard, whether there's the, it's the gratitude of joy or whether it's the uh, pleading of concern. And so we're invited to share our joys and concerns this day, so if you do have a joy or a concern, just raise your hand and I'll come out to you with the uh, microphone. And if you're here in the sanctuary, uh, uh, if you're on Zoom, just uh, type out your um, joy or concern and we'll make sure it gets read out. Um, I do want to share with you that um, uh, Gary uh, Bruce has asked me to, has, is asking for our prayers. Uh, Gary is uh, currently in a hospital. Um, he's been. He has a. He has an infection in his in his blood, and um, uh, yes. Uh, and so he is asking for our our our, our prayers. Um, uh, it seems that um, uh, the worst of it is seems to be behind Gary, but he could still use our prayers this day. I also, ask your prayers for my family and especially for my wife Andrea's family as her. Um, Andrews and Emily passed away uh, yesterday, so uh, prayers uh, for us as well. I see on Zoom uh, here, if I can find the mouse, um, there is a joy, uh, Melanie Chisholm. Uh, Melanie, I thank the Ministry and Personnel Committee and Council for reinstating me as your office administrator. 
I thank you, the congregation, for welcoming me back, and I'm thrilled to be returning to the church office and rejoining my staff team. So am I, Melanie, so am I. <laughs> Great to have you back. And so friends, are there joys and concerns that you'd like to share this evening? Hi, um, this is a concern from something I saw on W5 uh, about the Mexican cartels and avocados. I had no idea that avocados were worth the billions that they are nor did I have any idea about the horrific conditions that the Mexican farmers are put under when the cartels walk into your place and say, out now, I'm, it's mine. The cartels are so well equipped, they're like the American army, and I'm not kidding. I'm not oversensitive about these things. And when I saw on W5 some of the horrific things they did to the Mexican people, I had to turn the TV off. I couldn't watch it. So I guess it, it's a bit of a conundrum for me because there are some farmers who are fighting back. So should I buy the avocados? But I think it's something we should think about. It's We hear so much about all the other horror going on in the world, but what they're doing to the people of Mexico is beyond belief. Thank you, Mary. I saw back here, yes. I have a joy. Winter is back. And as, <laughs> as of yesterday, the cross-country ski trails are in wonderful shape. So if anybody's looking for a guide at Schneider's Bush, I'll be happy to lead you astray. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else, any blessings or concerns to share uh, with one another this day? No? Just gonna do one final check on Zoom here. Uh, so friends, not seeing any other blessings or concerns to share, let's uh, sing our intent to open our hearts. So friends, let us be together in prayer. Creative and creator God, in the darkness before creation, you made all that lives and breathes. In the darkness of Mary's womb, you formed Jesus, the bringer of light. And in the darkness of our world, your spirit sustains us. O oh God, you are with us in darkness and in light. Under the cover of darkness, Magi followed the star to the Christ child. And so we come from the east and we come from the west, following you on our different roads, following the same star to the same place. For you are with us in darkness and in light. In the stillness of the dark, we pray for all who need God's presence in a in a special way for people who cannot afford their bills, people who are out of work, people who have no place to live, people who are discouraged and hopeless, people who have become cynical and bitter. God, you are with us in our darkness and in our light. We live in this world in our bodies and we rejoice in life and breath. Yet when sickness or pain cripples us, we lose our bearings, and we feel lost and bewildered. And we need your presence to keep us safe. Be with those who are sick, those who are grieving, 
be with those who are in the dark. And friends, let us just pause for a moment and pray in silence the prayers that we find on our own hearts and minds in this moment. Loving God, you are with us in our darkness and in our light. We thank you for moments of inspiration, for moments of clear vision, where we see who we are and who we're meant to be, where we see who we are and where you want us to go, and give us the courage to take the journey that you call us to and give us strength on the road. Your presence sustains us and help us go from this worship this morning, having seen your face, and having paid homage to your goodness. Friends, let us now sing together the Lord's Prayer. Friends, God's love knows no bounds. It is here, but not just here. We extinguish our candles firm in this faith. And so may the smoke that rises from the flame be a reminder that the Spirit goes with us from this place, absorbed into our daily living, leading us and calling us to a deeper faith and joy and so our final hymn this day is may the god of hope go with us it's number 424 and your red voices united please rise as you are able
my, there we go. <laughs> so friends, once again, let us hear, let us leave here, born again, born from above, born by way of the womb of God, because it is the light that shines through our darkened and broken hearts that leads us once again down the path of courage and bestows upon us the acceptance, the willingness, and the beauty to rise and to love again. Always remember, God loves you, God keeps you, God's face is shining upon you, and it is for this reason that the peace of Christ is with us all. Amen. Amen.